Hey and welcome to our tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this fire text effect inside Microsoft Word. And it comes from my free ebook 2014 text effects in Microsoft Word. I will put the link in the description. It has all the details in there, but I will try to cover everything also in this video tutorial. So let's take a quick look at how the fire effect is being created. It's actually pretty easy. We are taking this text fire and we are changing the color from white to yellow to orange to red while moving the text up and blurring it a little bit. And we will do this blurring by applying a drop shadow effect. So let's start with the new blank document and insert a new text box. Make it fairly big and then we will type in fire, of course, with the exclamation mark. That's kind of important. And we will change the font to high tight. I will put the link in the description for this font. Change the size of the font to 150 and we are ready to add the drop shadow effect. So in order to the, the add a drop shadow effect, we will right click the, for the shape and select format shape. And for the text options, we will select text effects and add the drop shadow, which is under the shadow. So once I add a shadow, any kind of shadow, you will notice that the text moved a little bit. And as I change the distance between the shadow and the text, the shadow actually stays on the same place while the text is moving. So this will make it pretty hard for us to align the text since we want the text to be aligned and the shadow to be on different positions. So we have to do it in a different way. So we'll reset the shadow, set it shadow to no shadow. And how we will proceed is we will add a new shape, any shape, for example, the rectangle up here. Then I will group both shapes together using this group function and add the effect, a shadow, drop shadow effect. But instead of adding this to the text options, I will add this to the shape options. So I will open the shape options effects and add a drop shadow effect for the shapes. This will add shape, add the drop shadow effect for both shapes. You can see it's not going from the text because the text field has the outline and the fill. So if we reset the fill and outline, no fill and no outline, now you can see we get the drop shadow effect for the text itself. Also for the rectangle, we don't care about the rectangle at all, we will hide it in a minute. So if I change the distance now, you can see that the rectangle and the text stays on the same spot. We are just moving the shadow, which is what we want. So let's do a few adjustments. Let's change the text color of the fire to be, for example, white for now. And let's also change the page color. So I will jump to design a ribbon and change the page color to black. I will also maybe position it a little bit more like this, maybe make this text box bigger and center aligned. Position it around the middle of the page. Okay, this should work. So I already have a drop shadow applied to this text. It's just that it's black color, so it's invisible. So I will change the color to white for this first drop shadow effect. Lower transparency to zero. I don't see anything just because it's it's quite a, kind of subtle. It's it's just fine. I may change the blur to maybe bigger value, but I'm pretty happy with with how it is right now. It's just a little bit of blur of this white text. So I will use this as a base. I will copy paste it and move it to the same position. I also have to move it to the back. So I will select send to back. And for this second duplicated text, I will change the color of the shadow to be, for example, a yellow color. I will zoom in a little bit so it's more obvious what's happening here. And I will raise the distance to some bigger value, like for example, seven points, and the blur to maybe, I don't know, six or so. Maybe I will not move it that much. I will move it just by maybe five points or so. I will repeat the process multiple times. So I will select the, uh, both the entire group, copy paste it, move it to the same position, move it to back send to back, change the color to maybe orange, again move it a little bit up, blur it a little bit more, and repeat the process. So I'll copy paste this. There seems to be a big step between the orange color and the red color, so I may also change, you know, select more colors and select some darker orange color, for example, maybe this one. So it's in between the red and the, and the orange. I will move it to back or send to back. Again, move it in the shadow a little bit more to the up to the, and to blur it just a little bit more. And I'm using arrow keys up and down to tweak those values. I can as well use those arrow buttons. So again, copy paste this, 
aligned properly like this send to back change the color to red this time move it blur it and repeat the process so i, I think i may need maybe one or two more for this i will change the color to be like dark red send to back again move it a little bit blur it a little bit and for one more i may change the color to be for example dark violet instead of red so it will go from red to violet that will give us a little bit more interesting look so send to back increase the distance increase the blurriness so we have i believe about five or six different groups if i show the selection pane we should see all those groups we actually have around seven of them And now it's just a matter of zooming in and making sure that the gradient looks kind of smooth. I can see a big step between the yellow and the orange, so I may oh, I may locate the yellow layer, which is this one, and maybe increase the blur a little bit. And I may do the same for the orange one, which is, I believe, this one. Yes, that could be blurred as well. So again, shape options, shape effects, and blur it just a little bit more. I can easily spend a few hours tweaking this effect, but you get the point. You just have to make sure it kind of looks as big as possible, but there are no gaps in between the layers or hard layers. And once we are done with the effect, we don't need those rectangles anymore. We cannot delete them because that will screw everything up. We have to just hide them. So I will open each individual group and hide the rectangle in, inside each group like this. Okay, so we have no more visible rectangles. Then I may also add like a background light effect. So I may draw a big circle below the text. I will select insert shapes oval and draw a big circle like this. And I will change the fill to be gradient fill being a radial fill. Seems like I already have everything predefined, but just to start from the beginning, I have the type set to radial going from dark red color to dark red color but the second one has the transparency set to 100% then I will again send this to back so it adds a little bit of light below the text for line of course I have to set the line to be no line so we don't see this blue outline the only difference compared to my original version is there will there were some kind of particles or sparkles floating around so we can quickly add them as well so i will draw a new circle insert shape circle i will draw it with the shift key pressed change the outline to be a line to be no line and fill to be a solid line fill for example the orange one i will set the transparency to maybe 60 and then i will use effect called soft edges which will blur this shape so i will set the size to maybe this one it's like five or seven points i can copy paste this multiple times and move it around the text i can also change the color for some of them and the size for some of them so it will give us a little bit of variation you can probably use some bigger ones closer to the text and smaller ones for the particles which are far away from the text again it's kind of hard to move something when we have so many objects so i may use arrow keys on the keyboard to move it instead there is also also one nice shortcut if i hold the shift key and press the arrow keys i can change the size so i can make it smaller or i can make it bigger using the right and top arrow of course i have to press the right and top arrow the same amount of time to, to keep this circle and not being over like this and that's it yeah I think we have a very nice looking fire effect now we can still use the selection pane select individual groups even when we, those are groups we can still change the font so we can still change it to high tight normal version which will give us a little bit different result what we can also do is change the text, but instead of going to in each individual group and type in a different text, we can use 
replace pane so I will open the replace pane from here and in the find pane I have to be sure that what I when I type in fire exclamation mark I have to select find in text boxes in main document this will select all the text boxes and now I can say replace this with a different string for example I don't know hot that should replace all the, all the text boxes, all the strings in the text boxes. And that's it. Thanks for watching.